I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and in this video I have two easy tips for you for your daffodils and other spring bulbs. One is when to fertilize, and two is the importance of taking pictures. So let's get started. So a fun fact about daffodils and your other spring blooming bulbs that come back perennially every year is that inside the bulb underneath the soil is all the nutrients that the bulbs need to bloom fabulously this year. So as you can see, my tete -a are already starting to come up. They're one of the earliest blooming daffodils. And they already have all the nutrients they need. So in reality, they don't need fertilizer for this year's blooming season. In fact, the American Daffodil Society says that you don't even need to fertilize until you see the foliage coming up. And this fertilizer, if you use a slow release organic fertilizer for bulbs, is going to help have it store nutrients for the coming year. So you're trying to give it a little bit of a kick because it's gonna use all the nutrients up during its fabulous show this year. I'm using fabulous a lot because I absolutely love daffodils. So in addition to the American Daffodil Society saying when to fertilize, the Royal Horticultural Society in United Kingdom is saying the same thing. They say that as you start to see the leaves coming up and the blooms coming up, that's the best time to fertilize. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Today I'm going to put down bulb tone by Espoma. And a few things you should know about bulb tone. It is organic, all natural. It is a slow release fertilizer. So it will over time condition the soil, the roots, the bulb, flowers, the whole nine yards. You shouldn't apply this if your ground is still frozen. So if you're in a colder climate and your daffodils are starting to come up, wait a little bit because you want the soil to warm up so that the fertilizer can actually penetrate through the frozen soil. Another thing is, is that after you sprinkle this around your bulbs, you need to water it in or do what I'm doing. I'm putting it down today. We're getting a huge rainstorm tomorrow. Mother Nature will water it in for me. I'm all done. Now, the one thing it does say on the bag is that they suggest you apply it when you're planting bulbs, whether that's in the fall or in the spring. And they also say to put this down after the flowers bloom. As I mentioned to you, both the American Daffodil Society and the Royal Horticultural Society both say you should put this down as your flowers are blooming. The reason that I am gonna go with what they say and not what the bag says is because my crocuses and daffodils bloom at different times. For example, the crocuses, they're out now with some of the early daffodils, but by the time my late daffodils are done blooming, if I was to put this down then, I wouldn't even know where my crocus blooms were. So I like to put them down while I can see everything. And it makes it a little bit easier too. I don't have to come out and do several trips. Hopefully I can just do one and have it all done. Now I want to talk about why you should take pictures of your daffodils and spring flowering bulbs. Yes, you could post them on social media, <laughs> share them with friends, all that jazz. But that's not really what I'm talking about today. Today, there's three important reasons why it's a really great idea to photograph your bulbs. One, so you can remember where you planted them. I know that sounds really silly, but it's true. When everything is done, all the bulbs are gone, the foliage has already been dried up and cut away, by the time, say, July, August rolls around, when you're thinking of what do I want to plant bulb-wise, you're not going to remember even where you had these. And that leads me to the second point, which is when it's time to order more bulbs, you want to look at what you had. How did it grow? How did it look? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you want to try some different colors? Do you want to maybe try to plant more of what you already had? That's what I've done with my tete -a and my red devons, is they grow so well here that instead of adding a lot of different ones, I just keep expanding with those because they're just beautiful and they work great for me. And the third reason is 
when the foliage starts dying away, and we all agree how bad it looks, but it's necessary to keep it there, it's a good idea to figure out what you might want to plant, whether it's annuals or perennials, that can camouflage some of the dying foliage. So I've gotten better with doing that. It's not the easiest thing because I have daffodils planted all over the place, but I'm starting to choose different perennials that are also rabbit resistant like the daffodils are so that it can kind of complement and camouflage the dying foliage. So that's the third reason. Okay, I've got one final tip for you, and that's to watch my other daffodil videos. I cover seven weatherproof varieties that I absolutely love, that whether it's wind or rain, they stand tall, they look beautiful. I cover deadheading, and I cover when you should actually remove the dying foliage, and that's really important. A lot of people get that wrong, and there's right ways and wrong ways to leave the foliage. Hint, braiding your leaves, not a good idea. Until next time, happy gardening.